Jumu'ah, my dear brothers and sisters, is wajib to attend upon every capable adult male who is not traveling and is not sick. It is of the wajibat of this religion. And there is only a legitimate excuse, a genuine sickness, or somebody who is a traveler and not muqeem, or somebody who is unable to, for reasons beyond his control, come for Jumu'ah. Every able-bodied male adult must come for Salatul Jumu'ah. Failure to do so is a major sin in the Sharia. So much so that the scholars say, not coming to Jumu'ah without a legitimate excuse is a sign of hypocrisy. And they base this on authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of them is the hadith in Sahih Muslim where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that people should Come to Jumu'ah and not abandon it, or else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place a khatam ala qulubihim, a seal on their hearts, and they will be written from those who do not remember Allah at all. And another hadith in Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever leaves three Jumu'ah without an excuse, out of laziness, whoever leaves three Jumu'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put a seal on his heart. And when, once Allah puts a seal on your heart, then unless Allah removes it, you will never be able to remove it. Once a seal has been placed, this means the heart has now become hard. Nobody leaves Jumu'ah out of laziness, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then give him what he deserves. Jumu'ah is of the most wajibat of the salawat to pray in the masjid, and that is why, and to pray in congregation, and that is why it is the only salat that must be prayed in congregation. You may pray dhuhr by yourself, you may pray fajr by yourself. Jumu'ah you must pray in jama'ah. There's no concept of Jumu'ah being prayed individually. And therefore Jumu'ah is of the signs of Islam. Our scholars say of the signs of an Islamic community is they have a Jumu'ah Salah. Min Sha'a'ir al-Islam. And our scholars say that any time a group of people are together in any community, three or more, scholars differ is the minimum two or three, but three or more people have for Jumu'ah. They are obligated to establish Jumu'ah in that area, in that community if there is no Salatul Jumu'ah. Also, it is not allowed to buy and sell during Salatul Jumu'ah for those upon whom uh, uh, Jumu'ah is obligatory. And by the way, when we say buying and selling, we mean running a business. We mean uh, in being employed. We mean getting paid and leaving Jumu'ah at this expense. It is not allowed. You are not allowed to prefer money over Jumu'ah. These days, many of us, we don't buy and sell. We're working for a corporation. We're not allowed to leave Jumu'ah simply for the sake of that corporation, simply for the sake of our paycheck. And in this country, we are legally allowed, the bulk of us, the majority of us, of course there are some professions, yes, it is not possible. But the vast majority of professions, they can claim that they must have a worship service uh, on Friday, and they try to take an extended break. If you are legally capable of taking a break for Jumu'ah, then Islamically you are required to take a break for Jumu'ah. No doubt there are some people whose occupations do not allow this, and for them, we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a way out, and that they should try to look for alternatives in a job, until they find this, they're allowed to work here, but they must try to find an occupation or a job that allows them to attend Jumu'ah. Now, if a person is a business owner, he is not required to shut his business for Jumu'ah, but he himself must come for Jumu'ah. And he must put in charge of the business those upon whom Jumu'ah is not obligatory. He cannot leave a Muslim employee. If he leaves a Muslim employee for Jumu'ah, then he is also sinful because he is telling his Muslim brother to commit a sin. He may leave a non-Muslim because Jumu'ah is not obligatory on a non-Muslim. Or he may leave a Muslim lady because women are not obliged to come for Jumu'ah. Of course it is good for them to listen to the khutbah, but it is not wajib for women to come. So if he leaves a Muslim lady in, in his employment, or if he leaves another person upon whom Jumu'ah is not obligatory, this is permitted. But as a business owner, he cannot ask a Muslim to stay. And even if he comes, he will carry a sin because he told a Muslim to not come and pray Jumu'ah. A Muslim male cannot be told to be exempt from of the etiquettes of Jumu'ah is that Jumu'ah is a time when the Imam's khutbah is a necessary part of the ritual. Many people think that Jumu'ah is only about the two rak'at. No! The Prophet ﷺ clearly told us, in fact, Allah tells us in the Qur'an, فَاسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Come to the dhikr of Allah. And by unanimous consensus, dhikrullah here is the khutbah. Come to the khutbah. 
And so the khutbah is a necessary part of the Jumu'ah. And whoever intentionally misses the khutbah will not get the rewards of Jumu'ah. Of course, if a person is beyond his control or whatnot, inshallah Allah will forgive. But for the one who intentionally delays, for the one who does not come even though he's capable of coming, such a person will not get the rewards or the blessings of having fulfilled the requirement of Jumu'ah. And it is so important to listen to the khutbah that the Prophet ﷺ said that it is not allowed to speak during the khutbah of the imam. It is not allowed to speak even for something that otherwise would be obligatory. For example, if somebody says, Assalamu Alaikum, then if somebody walks in and says, Assalamu Alaikum, you do not even respond, Wa Alaikum Assalam. If somebody sneezes, says, Alhamdulillah, you do not even say, Allah. And this is something that outside of the khutbah is wajib. But to illustrate how important it is to listen to the khatib, the Prophet ﷺ made it forbidden to say anything during the khutbah. Even if it is something that otherwise would be recommended or encouraged. So much so the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever turns to his companion and says, be quiet during the khutbah, even this person has said something he should not have said. Somebody is speaking, you ignore that person. That's between him and Allah Azza wa You concentrate on the khutbah. Of course, there are some exceptions. Obviously, if there's a general right now, for example, what happened, we need to deal with this. We need to have a conversation what's going on. This is something that is for the benefit of the whole congregation. But a private conversation, conversation, a side conversation. This is something that is completely prohibited. So much so that even if you must say something during the khutbah, try to use your hands to give some motions to somebody. If it's dangerous or if you shouldn't sit in a place, give motions with your hands uh, rather than speaking out because this is something that is forbidden during the khutbah. Our Prophet ﷺ forbade somebody even playing with stones during the khutbah. In those days, the whole masjid was full of pebbles. And in those days, you would just move a pebble or two if you're not paying attention. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever plays with these pebbles, فَقَدْ لَغَى لَغَى means his khutbah now has become null and void. If this is the case with pebbles, how about with cell phones? How about with blackberries? How about with iPhones? How about checking your, uh, checking your text messages during the khutbah? All of this would constitute not paying attention to the khutbah. And the sad fact of the matter, brothers and sisters, even if the khatib is boring, the wajib still applies on you. The khatib might be whatever he is, but you are required to try your best to pay attention. And this is what our sharia tells us to do. Friday is the holiest day of the week. So the Muslim will look forward to Friday and maximize the usefulness of Friday. On Friday, we should do extra dhikr. On Friday, the Prophet ﷺ said that because Friday is the blessed day, what did he say? فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الصَّلَوَاتِ عَلَيْهِ Increase your salawat upon me on the day of Friday. So of the etiquettes of Friday is that we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. And we say this more times than we would on any other day. On Friday, we're supposed to give extra charity, as Ibn Qayyim said. On Friday, we do extra nafil. On Friday, we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on Friday, we are spiritually more conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this shows us the mistakes that many of us make, my dear brothers and sisters. Many of us. And that is that we treat Friday as a day where astaghfirullah sins are committed. We treat Friday as a day, especially this culture does not help because Friday is the last day of the week day for us. Even though Islamically it's supposed to be the first day of the new week. But because it's the last day of the week day, Friday becomes a day where we want to celebrate in a haram manner. Or we want to at least, even if it's not haram, it might be makruh, we waste time. We do something that is not supposed to be done. We trivialize Friday. We don't look forward to it as a holy day. And no doubt this is very difficult to do in this land because Friday is the end of the week when it's supposed to be the first day of the week. But this is what separates the pious Muslim from the one who's not so pious. This is what separates the one who has iman and taqwa from the one who has weak iman and taqwa. Can you remember what is Friday? Can you take this day as a day of true blessing, of true Eid? Because the Prophet said this is the Sayyid of all days. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Friday is not the last day of the week, it is the first day of the week. Friday is a new beginning for us. Every Friday, we should think of Allah creating Adam, of Allah causing Adam to enter Jannah, of Allah causing Adam a second chance to come down to this earth, of Allah accepting the repentance of Adam. Every Friday, we should think, what have I done this last week? Let this week be better than last week. Let this week be a new beginning for me. Let me make sure that from this Friday to the next, I'm gonna make sure that just like Adam was given all of these chances, I too will be given all of these 
these chances. Let Friday become the most blessed and glorious day of the week as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended. He who honors Friday in this world will get the blessings of the Fridays of the next. And what great blessings they await us in Jannah on these days of Friday. He who abandons all of these businesses and money and pleasures to come to Jumu'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless him with looking at him at Jumu'ah on the day of Friday. What better blessing is that? وَلَدَيْنَا mazid. Allah says, we have much more for them and that much more will be the blessings of Friday in Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to be amongst those who see Allah every Friday in Jannah. Allahumma inni da'in fa'aminu.